أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد أشرف المرسلين وعلى صحبه أجمعين ومن اتبع لسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأقول لكم يا أيها الإخوة والأخوات السلام عليكم brothers and sisters I greet you with the good of Islam which is to say may the peace and blessing of Allah سبحانه وتعالى be upon you after that we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to send his blessings and his peace upon his messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib al-Hashim al-Qurashi al-Arabi and upon his companions and upon his family and upon all those who follow their righteous guidance until the day of judgment Amma Ba'ad now as to what proceeds insha'Allah we continue with our lessons of Mukhtasar al-Akhtari uh, the abridgment of Imam al-Akhtari in Akhlaq and Tahara and in Salah and uh, in, in morals, purification and in prayer uh, we're in the Ba'u Fi Sahwi we're in the chapter on forgetfulness uh, it has a pretty lengthy um, a lengthy uh, compendium of texts in this particular section just because he's basically giving you examples of the different uh, instances uh, of whether you would prostrate before the Salah uh, excuse me, before the Salaamu Alaikum or prostrate after the Salaamu Alaikum and also things for example that someone doesn't owe anything for such as the, the person who is you know remembering Allah and he has khushu and that khushu causes him to cry uh, that person didn't owe anything or the person who uh, when he hears the name of the Prophet Sallallahu he says he sends salawat upon him uh, that person wouldn't know anything so he's just going through different scenarios with you that way you're able to rectify your prayer in the case of any mistakes now he says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله he says ومن قام من ركعتين قبل الجلوس he says ومن قام من ركعتين قبل الجلوس he said whoever gets up after praying uh, two rak'ahs before sitting down meaning sitting down to do the tahiyyat lillah the tashahud and he gets up you know so he's supposed to sit in that place that's a sunnah that he's supposed to do it's just the sitting and the tashahud is, is a sunnah so that's two sunnahs right there he says فإن تذكر قبل أن يفارق ال if he remembers before he separates from the earth with his two hands and his two knees, you know, basically in a state where he's momentum, he wouldn't be able to uh, sustain it by staying still, right? If he's in a state whereby if he stops the motion, he's going to go down, then then he returns to sitting down, and there's no sajda upon him, there's no prostration before him. So as he says, from the from so long as before you get up from the ground, so you you pray two rakahs after the dhuhr, right? You, excuse me, you pray two rakahs during the dhuhr, and then after the second sujood, uh, uh, or the second uh, sajda, uh, in uh, the second sajda in in the dhuhr, you're supposed to sit down and say the tashahud. So you mistakenly forget and you start to get up to go pray the third rakah, but before. You get up before your hands and your knees separate the ground, meaning both of them, right? Because if both of them separate from the ground, that means that you're off the ground, right? It's either your knees are on the ground uh, and, your, and, your, and your hands are there, so you're using that to prop yourself up, you're still on the ground. Or your hands are off the ground and your knees are on the ground and you're using your knees to, to, to prop yourself up, right? So long as one of them is on the ground and you remember and you go back to doing the, the, the shahud and the sitting down for the shahud, he says, that's okay. And there's no such that upon you. you don't have to prostrate for forgetfulness or for addition. He says, "Wa in farqaha tamada." He says, "But if he, if he, uh, if he uh, separates uh, from the ground, from both his his two hands and his two knees, tamada, then he continues. I Meaning he goes to the third rakah because he's left the sunnah. He's going to the fard. He's officially entered into the fard. He's gotten up. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't uh, return back to the sunnah." And he would do the prostration before the salam alaikum. Why? Because he left out two sunnas. You understand? He says, What in Raja al Mufarakati. He says, What in Raja al Mufarakati. If he returns after he had left the ground, uh, 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 or after or after he stood up. So now in this situation, he's not supposed to go back to it after he has stood up. Or after he's left the ground, but he just forgets. He does it. He goes. He or he is sahi and he does it forgetfully. Or Ami then he does it intentionally because he thinks that's what he's supposed to do. He says sahat salatu. His salah is still is still is still uh, valid. 
with Sajid al but he would prostrate afterwards in order because he added something to the Salah. You understand? He would prostrate after the Salah. He says, <clears throat> He says, Woman, he says, Woman, salati he sa he had said about the salam. Whoever sighs, like, uh, forgetfully, like, <sighs> then he would prostrate after the salam. When can I add it? But if it's uh, intentionally, but salatuhu, it breaks his prayers. You understand? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So the sighing is as though you, it, it has, it's as though it has a harf to it, you know. It's as though it has letters to it. So intentionally in the prayer, you know, and you know what you're doing, then it breaks your prayer. He says, "Woman, atasafi salatihi." If someone sneezes in the prayer, "Fala he shouldn't, uh, he shouldn't say "Alhamdulillah" or "Bil uh, you know, "Alhamdulillah." Wala yarudu ala man shammatahu, and he should not reply to the one that sneezes. Or the one that says, uh, You understand? Wala yushammat, wala yushammitu and he should not reply to the person that sneezes as well. He shouldn't make dua for him while he's praying. فَإِنْ حَمِدَ اللَّهِ But if he does praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَا شَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ Then there's nothing upon him. doesn't break his salah. You understand? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says, وَمَنْ تَثَاءَبَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ He said, whoever yawns while he's praying, Saddafahu, then he closes his mouth. Well, I and he should not, he should not, uh, uh, he should not, uh, how do you call it? He shouldn't spit, like he shouldn't exit phlegm. Tanfuthu, nafth, he shouldn't. If you, if you're, if you're in a prayer and you spit, uh, illa fi thawbi, he should not do it except upon his, on his, uh, on his shirt, min ghayri ikhraj khuruf, without exiting. Uh, word without exiting huruf like letters, like he spits and says, you know, like just you know, spit, spit the spit out. Mm -hmm. He says, Woman, whoever has doubt, meaning that he's the doubt is greater than the certainty, as you learn in Usul fifth, or with najasat, and he remembers in his prayer for a little bit of time. ثُمَّ تَيَقَّنَ tahara Then he becomes certain that he has tahara فَلَا شَيْءًا عَلَيْهِ Then there's nothing upon him. You understand? He says, وَمَنْ, وَمَنْ, وَمَنْ إِلْتَفَتَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ سَاهِيًا You understand? فَلَا, uh, فَلَا, uh, فَلَا شَيْءًا عَلَيْهِ Whoever looks around, you know, he does iltifat, he starts to just look around while he's, while he's praying. So he's just glancing everywhere, just looking around while he's praying. I've seen it more than one time it, it, when people do that. It's, it's uh, sometimes it's just a tick. But whoever does that sahiyan, he does so forgetfully or because he has a tick, falashi and alihi, then there's nothing upon him as far as prostration. Wa in and if he does it purposefully, fahuwa makruhu, then it's dislike. You understand? Wa in istabdaral qiblata at asla. But if he's looking around, takes him to the point where he turns his back upon the qibla, then his salah is, is, is batil. Because one of the conditions of praying salah is that you face the qibla. You know, so he says, "Woman, salla bi haririn." If if whoever prays with silk, meaning as a man, or uh, or he prays with, uh, uh, or he prays with uh, with silk, you understand? Or so, or he prays with gold, right? Because of the fact that he's, you know, those things are prohibited for men. Or he, or he's so wicked that he steals during his prayer. Or he looks at something haram during his prayer. Then he's definitely a, a sinner. But his prayer is still valid. You'll learn this in Qawaiyad al Fiqiyah, where he says that the act only becomes uh, becomes a batil or fasid if something that's a shart of the act or the that al amal itself is fasid. You understand? But something that is uh, uh, then if that even if that thing happens to incur a sin, then the act is still uh, is still valid. So you pray in a stolen house. You kill somebody, you took over their house. You're a massive sinner. You understand? A massive sinner. A fasiq. You understand? 
but the prayer that you pray in that house is still valid because that of the prayer itself is not that you that the, the prayer that the, it's not a condition of the prayer that you have to pray in a house that is that is uh that is belongs to you or that is legally obtained. You understand? Now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he says, woman. He says, woman. Uh, he says, "Woman, Quran." He says, "Whoever mixes up uh, his recitation and his recitation Quran with a word that's not from the Quran." So he says, "Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin." and he just says television accidentally, forgetfully. You know, he says, "The Sajid Abba Salam." He prostrates after the Salam Alaikum. Wa in kana min al-Quran, but if that word is in the Quran, fala sujuda alayhi. Then it's not, then there's no sajda upon him. Illa an yatagayyar al Unless he, he changed the lafz. So for example, you know, he's supposed to say, Alhamdulillah, and he says, Alhamdulillah rahman Even though Ar-Rahman is in the Quran, he changed the lafz of what's the, what the nafs of the Quran says, of a word itself. You understand? Aw yafsudu al ma'ana, or something that changes the meaning completely. Fayasjuda uh, ba'da salam, that he would have to. Prostrate after the salamu alaykum. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says, so these are all the different instances that he give, he's given it to you. Mm -hmm. He says, Woman fi salati Whoever dozes off briefly during the prayer, then there's no such that upon him. Like, you know, he kind of just uh, dozes off a little bit, but he's still kind of aware of himself. He says, Wa in thakulal. But if he if the if the sleep is heavy, then he would have to repeat his uh, salah and he would have to repeat his wudu. Why? Because the salah, it, the the shock, one of the one of the shurut of the salah is that you have to be uh, sane. When we say sane, your aql has to be there. When you're in when you're in a state of sleep, you're treated as someone whose aql is not there. And one of the state of one of the elements of of uh, one of the actions is that breaks the wudu because it's a suburb for hadith as we said is heavy sleep right so his wudu would break and his salah would automatically become invalid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think inshallah we'll end it here